local all morning. The Fox 61 Morning News starts now. And good morning, everyone. Coming up, I will explain how hot it will continue to be right through the weekend. Check out the sun coming up in Hartford right now. Details in a few minutes. And terrifying moments for a woman in Wolcott when her car was stolen in an instant. Her message to everyone out there next. And an update on the man accused of pushing a child right off his bike in Deep River. We've shared this video before. The charges he is now facing. Good morning, happy Friday. It is six o'clock and we have a weather alert here at Fox 61. We're glad you're with us this morning, America Arias. And I'm Keith McGilvery. Good to spend the week with you, my friend. Nice to have you at home. Hey, Tim's taking a little time off, but the heat is not. Yeah. As we take a live look this the heat morning. heat is on. Yeah, the heat, the heat I'm not going to sing. Yeah, um, <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, live look at Hartford, Mohegan Sun, and the Elm City. There's that kind of haze across the sky. Uh, fortunately, Sam Sampiri is tracking it all. We knew this weather was coming because yes. our weather team told us it was. I heard you mention uh, the tail end of the five that this could stretch into six days beyond five potentially. That's right. Yeah, well, it's going to be six. The question is, does it go to seven, seven. Okay. which would be on Monday because now oh, the wow. cold front is going to make it Sunday. And by the way, it could probably get up near 100 on Sunday afternoon. My so goodness. yes, get ready. And that would be the apex uh, of this heat wave so far. So good morning, everyone. And you can see the sun coming up right now. And uh, temperatures in the 70s this morning. Of course, when it starts out at 75 in Hartford, you know that we're going to get into the 90s. 67 Torrington, a bit cooler in northwestern Connecticut. There's uh, somewhat slightly less humid air uh, moving in. You can see the dew points are down in the 60s and even uh, go going down in the lower 60s, just up in Salisbury there. And that's going to be the trend, just a little bit less humid. The one thing to keep an eye on is this little shower right here in western Pennsylvania and uh, New York. It's going to be cranking along. There's not really much in a way to trigger any severe weather, but certainly we'll be watching that later on this afternoon into this evening. High temperatures getting well up into uh, the 90s later on uh, this afternoon. Now I'll toss this out to Julia and uh, coming up and she's, uh, where are you now, Julia, and what's going on? Hi, I'm at Mill Pond Park here in Newington, and I have sort of a less scientific way to tell you that it's going to be hot today, Sam, and that is the frizz factor of my hair. And if you can see it right now, I just tried to straighten it just about two minutes ago. Clearly didn't work out. Oh, gosh, Alex, my photographer's really zooming in there. <laughs> So yeah, we know it's going to be hot today and people are going to be wanting to come in here, especially to places like the town pool here in Newington to keep cool. But we also know staying inside actually is the best way to stay safe over these next couple of days. So we want you to stay inside. We want you to save safe and we will also want to save you some money. So here's some tips from Eversource on how you can keep cool and conserve energy at the same time. First off, keep those air conditioners to a moderate temperature temperature. So listen to this for every degree higher on that thermostat, the air conditioner will use one to 3% less electricity. So keep that in mind as those air conditioners are working overtime. Also don't block that airflow. Keep the air vents clear of furniture, clean your air conditioner filters and coils. And this seems like common sense, but keep those blinds closed and it's scientific here using curtains, shades and blinds can lower the temperature of the room by 20 degrees. Also set those ceiling fans to rotate counterclockwise and at a higher speed. But of course, turn those fans off once you leave the room because we don't we know it doesn't cool the room. It really just cools you while you are in there. And we want to just stress again, if you can stay inside today from dusk to dawn on days like this doctor's orders. We can see anything from mild heat exhaustion, just being out in the heat for too long, feeling more tired and and little little small amounts of dehydration to our body not being able to compensate for it when our body just begins to overheat and we develop heat stroke. All right, we're taking a live look out here at the pool. I don't know if you can see it right now, but the ducks are cooling off in the pool this morning. We just saw the uh, pool engineer here earlier, and he says that this place is really going to be packed over the next couple of hours. They also have day camps that run at this park. They've been keeping cool under the tent over there and trying to just go in the pool as much as they can to stay cool out here. But he says it's summer. 
their kids and they are used to staying in the in the heat all day. So they've been doing a good job of that. We hope to speak to the Parks and Rec director later on this morning. But for now, we're going to send it on over to Lauren Zenzi in the CTDOT Traffic Center. Hi there, Lauren. Are we seeing a lot of people out on the roads yet? Uh, as of right now, Julia, we are just following one crash here uh, in the CTDOT Traffic Center out in Plainville. Want to bring you right out to that on the westbound side of I-84. Three lanes are closed as of right now. We do have a time lapse of them because this was an overturned motor vehicle. If we can get to that, they did have to bring in a crane to get the car out of uh, the roadway. Thank you to our editors for doing this for me. Uh, and now you can see that they were able to get it out. They are now loading it onto a flatbed. If we could take a live look out at the scene now so we can see what we're working with. Yep, you see it right there on the right hand side of your screen. They're trying to uh, load it up onto a tow truck and they have successfully loaded it up and it looks like that they are getting ready to clear the scene. So that is some good news right there at six o'clock because they did have several lanes closed. Taking a live look in Hartford, I-91 North and southbound moving just fine. Some delays on five and 15 right there. And in Weathersfield, things are looking good. Let's take a look. We are also seeing some heavy delays on the eastbound side of I-84 approaching the capital city. Traffic moving at about three miles an hour. So if you are heading into the capital city right near exits 48 and 51, that is as that's the off ramp to I-91. So we always see delays around there, but it is moving a little slower than usual. Bridgeport looking good this morning. I-95 north and southbound looking good. And also New Haven is moving freely. A lot more volume on the roads this morning in New Haven. Not sure if there's a morning event or something, <laughs> but uh, as of right now, we are seeing that volume, but no incidents to report. We'll check back in coming up in the next half hour. But for now, guys, I'll send things back over to you. All right, certainly Lauren keeping Banks. Lauren busy this mm -hmm. morning, 607. Want to talk about yesterday's storms causing damage for several homeowners, including in Woolkit, where trees came down on top of two different houses. You see those massive, massive branches there. Those incidents happening at a home on Hickory Lane and Averill Avenue. Police say fortunately no one was hurt at either property. Neighbors recounting the moments uh, this all unfolded during the storm. I thought it was thunder. It sounded like just thunder. I was like, oh, weird. We haven't. I, there was lots of wind, but there was no real thunder and lightning. But then it didn't stop. It just kept going and going. And then I was like, oh, no. I, so I round the corner there and I can see it literally in the window. Wow, uh, to hear that crackle and then find this, it is, uh, we are lucky no one was hurt there, uh, but certainly some scary moments there in that community. Do want to remind you, whenever severe weather happens in our state, your hometown, the Fox 61 News app has you covered. Weather and radar conditions right down to your own neighborhood hour by hour. It is also where you can send us pictures and video of what you are seeing in your own neighborhood, the Near Me feature right there on the app. And 608 happening today. A man accused of pushing an 11 year old boy off of his bike and telling him to get out of town in Deep River is heading to court. We're talking about 48 year old Jameson Chapman. He's facing charges of third degree assault and risk of injury to a child. After this video here emerged of a child being pushed off his bike. Now, since the incident, community members and the victim's family have spoken out about the alleged assault, saying they want to see more done. Now, new details and what was first to believed to be just a house fire in New London. It's now being investigated as a murder and arson. Police say a husband confessed to killing his wife before setting the house on fire. Now we've learned that a 22 year old woman died and an infant was injured in that house. Police say 23 year old George Dodson is behind bars facing several charges. And Fox 61 is learning that he has been in the U.S. Navy for about five years. He is a second class petty officer and is his enlisted occupation is a nuclear electronics technician. Court documents allege that he admitted to killing his wife over jealousy and then started a fire. Any life loss, one life loss is one too many. And this is a tragic event in this uh, within the New London community. Joe Dodson is being held on a $3 million bond. He was arraigned yesterday and is due back in court next month. And if you or someone you know is in a domestic violence situation, there are a lot of resources available to help. One of them is CT Safe Connect. You can call or text them at 860 774 
2900 the numbers on your screen the website there as well ctsafeconnect.org and this is a 24 hour 7 day a week resource you can call and get help at any time yeah, just click pause or rewind right there on your remote, take a picture of the screen and maybe send it to a friend who might be in need. Uh, in additional news this morning, 610, three more teenagers facing assault charges in a fight that happened not too far from where a teenager was stabbed to death at a house party down in Shelton. Police saying all three teens turned themselves in on Thursday. The three are accused of attacking another 16 year old who was invited to the party. The incident also being linked to the deadly stabbing of 17 year old Jimmy McGrath, another team, Raul Valle is being charged as an adult with McGrath's murder. I want to go back to Walcott this morning where a woman was pushed to the ground by a man allegedly who's accused of stealing her car right from her garage. This all unfolding yesterday morning on Grove Avenue, a neighbor's camera catching a quick glimpse of the suspect who police say was carrying bolt cutters at the time. Officers able to find the car parked in Waterbury a short time later. The victim telling us that she was confronted by the man who took her keys and then took off with her car. I couldn't do nothing but just look at him drive away. I said, bring that car back. So we took off up the street, maybe doing 60 on that little street. Mm. Oh my gosh, looking at Miss Manning, leave her car alone. What a tough experience that for her. That is just it's awful. awful, right? So awful. Na neighbors say it is not the first time cars have been stolen from that area. Police say since posting the video of the suspect on social media, they have received several tips. But if anyone has any information on what happened to Miss Manning's car there, mm -hmm. they definitely do want to hear from you.